Welcome back to another video. Of course, you find me indoors in the house where a lot of us are. We're self isolating, we're quarantining, but that's not going to stop us with photography. And it's not going to stop Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, obviously we're doing something a little bit different, we're inside, we're all staying inside in the house, we're all not going outside, there's nothing to even go outside and do really anymore, apart from just enjoy the sunshine and a bit of fresh air, but we're all staying inside. And that doesn't have to stop the creativity, it doesn't have to stop the photography. On Friday we put out a video all about five photography projects you can try in the home without ever leaving the house. And today, we're going to do something along those lines. We are going to take a photo of some Lego. And this, all the things we talk about in this video apply to taking photos of Lego, toys, anything like that in the house. Now this is a really quite cool little photography project to try while we're all at home because it's really creative. You know, there's a lot that you can do. You're obviously setting up a little set and things like that. It's very creative. It challenges you a little bit because it can be difficult to make something like Lego look good. To make that whole photo, the end product look good can be pretty challenging. So today we're gonna go through that. I was gonna shoot this outside. Uh, I was gonna take the photo outside and actually film all of this outside, but it turns out it's really windy. It's actually uh, just not gonna work. So we're gonna film it inside, but I'm gonna show you what I'm be doing outside with the, uh, with the Lego. Now, I'm actually taking a photo of this. It's a Lego Formula One car that Panasonic actually sent us, so it's got some Panasonic branding on there. We've got another car as well, and a little sort of kind of setup for them to be racing through. And we're gonna try and get the best possible picture using just these props. Now, of course, you could use any kind of Lego or any kind of toy at all. The key bits we're gonna talk about are gonna to apply to all kinds of things. And there's a few key areas that we want to focus on. Now, of course, the first one is the setup. You want to have the actual setting. You want to have what you're going to have around, what you're going to include in the frame, in the photograph, so composition as well. Speaking of composition, we're going to talk about angles. You know, what angle you might want to shoot this kind of thing at, you know, whether you want to get down eye level, up above, things like that. We're going to talk about lighting, which is going to play a massive part in it, whether you're using natural lights, so basically the sun, or whether you're using uh, your own light, a flash or a continuous light or something like that. There's lots of different ways that you could light it for uh, a certain kind of look or a certain kind of effects that you want to go for. And of course, depth of field is going to play a huge part in this as well, because getting close up with little items like this can be quite challenging when it comes to depth of field. Now, first things first, when it comes to this, my setup was actually just outside the front of my house, so about no more than 10 feet outside my front door, so not going too far outside, just on the pavement. I wanted something that looked like a road. Wasn't gonna sit in the road to take the photo, but wanted something that looked like the road, so I'm just using the pavement, which looked particularly good, and it actually, as a road, was probably more size appropriate for this kind of car. End up having the kind of grass verges down the side. Now, I was using the Panasonic S1R, so the Panasonic Lumix S1R camera, and then the 50 millimeter F1.2. Now, this isn't necessarily the lens that I would uh, always choose for something like this. You might wanna go for macro lens, or even just a 24 to 70 or 24 105, would be great for something like this, very versatile. But I love that 50 mil lens and I, I don't shoot with 50 mil as much as I'd like. So I wanted to try it out for this and I'm happy with the end result that I managed to get. Now in terms of the setup, this is gonna be the key car that I'm photographing, but I wanna have some other bits in the frame. So you can see that I've included the kind of uh, racetrack finish line kind of thing that they've included with this set, which both the cars can race through. And then I've got the other kind of more rally car in the background. So this car is essentially winning the race with that car blurred out in the background. But whatever you're gonna shoot, it's important to consider the environment that they're gonna be in. So what kind of flat lay they're going to be on top of. In this case, the pavement, but it could be wood, it could be grass, could be anything. You can find little tree roots. That would look great for a more of an action scene. You wanna make sure that you're considering that environment. You also wanna make sure that you're considering what's gonna be in the scene. So in this case, we've got this car, we've got the other car, we've got the finish line, and then I'm using the pavement as kind of like a, 
like a road. But you want to consider what you might want to have in there. Other bits of Lego, other bits of, of toys. Whatever you choose to do, you want to make sure that you have the environment for you. You want to have the environment for what you're going for. So that it's not just about the subject. There's some other bits in there as well to create a visual interest. And in some situations to create a framing device for your actual subject in the frame. Which leads us on to how you are going to frame and how you are going to compose the shot. Now in this situation, obviously the, the main car the Formula One car is right out in front. I want the focus point to be on the driver himself. I say himself, he's not real, but on the driver himself and a little bit on the Panasonic logo as well, just to keep that nice and whew, just because it looks good, I think. But I want to have the car behind in the shot. So I've deliberately set that off to one side so that you can still see that it's not masked by this car at all, but it is blurred out. And then of course, they're just coming through that kind of finish line, but I wanted to position the camera so that I've got, uh, I've actually got the lights and things like that in there. Now, in terms of angles for that, that means that I want to be shooting from a relatively low angle. Now, you'll often find that shooting at eye level with whatever your subject is, is going to look really, really good. That means getting down low to the kind of eye level of your driver here is going to look great. I ended up going eye level and then just up a little bit so that I could get more of the detail of the top of the car. But it depends what you're photographing. Something like this has a lot of detail on the top, so I don't want to be completely eye level because I'm going to lose all of that detail. So I want to be a little bit higher up to make sure I'm catching that but if you are going for something like an action scene or you're gonna have Lego men or something like that jumping about all over the place then you might want to consider going really low right down to eye level and of course if you can get even lower and shoot up you're gonna make the subject seem bigger seem taller and seem just just generally more heroic now let's talk a little bit about the lighting of the scene now of course I was shooting outside which means that I was using this natural light just the Sun and I was waiting for clouds to go over the Sun so I was getting a kind of softer light clouds over the Sun uh, are really, really useful. They work a little bit like a soft box over the main light that is the sun. So you get these soft shadows. Everything just looks really, really nice. Now, of course, you don't always want to go for that, but for this particular setting, it worked really well. I, I think it helped to create a bit of atmosphere as well. But of course, if you're not shooting outside, you can either position your setting, your setup near to a window. That's going to allow you to use natural light to capture your setting, to capture your scene. That's a really good way of doing things. I'm actually lighting this video now via natural light just it's just a window filling onto me there and it's a very diffused light coming through the window so it looks really good and that's a really great way of, of doing it without having to set up lights or if you don't have lights that's a really easy way of setting things up of course if you want to use lights I generally use continuous lighting but of course you could use flash as well but you're probably going to want to have maybe a couple of lights or at least one main light and then something to reflect that now that can either be a reflector and I'll link to all of this down in the description so you can go check that out or of course you could use a piece of like white card or something like that just to reflect that light back and actually just fill in those shadows a little bit of course the alternate option is to use a second light now that's something that I sometimes do maybe have one main bigger stronger light off to one side so you get a bit of directional light a bit of directional shadows and then a softer light over on the other side just filling in those shadows a little bit and of course we need to talk about depth of field now this can be a tricky one at this kind of range I'm using a 50 millimeter f1.2 lens which is oh absolutely amazing and the bokeh is fantastic but it's not always what I want for this kind of photo I want to make sure I've got my driver actually in focus I want to have some of the Panasonic branding in focus and then I want to have the car kind of almost like it's zooming through the focal point I want to have a relatively deep depth of field but I do want to have that car in the background blurred out and then the path blurred right out so it almost looks like a road that they're going through now of course a little bit of experimentation is needed here I started off around f8 to see what that would look like because of course the closer you get into your subject the shallower that depth of field is going to get anyway so trying to go with something like f8 allows me to get get a, a relatively deep depth of field but of course like i say it's still blurring out that car in the background blurring out the path as well and then it's just a bit of experimentation i tried f11 i tried f4 f5.6 i ended up sticking around f5.6 that seemed to be giving me the best options for Having my driver in focus, having the, the bits of the car that I wanted in focus, but, but actually blurring out that background and the other car to the level that I wanted it to be blurred out. So I think that, that worked really quite well for me. And then ultimately you want to take a bunch of photos. You don't want to worry too much about how many you're taking because for me at least, I much prefer to take too many and then just go through them 
rather than not get the one and have to reset everything up. It's it's a nightmare. So actually, if you take just a few, you take them at different angles, maybe try different, uh, different settings, maybe a, a shallower depth of field, a deeper depth of field, and you're gonna find one that suits you perfectly. It's easier to go through them then on the computer, on a bigger screen, and sift through the ones. Let's go over to Lightroom now and talk about how we're gonna edit our photo. Right, so I've brought my photos into Lightroom where I've now got them uh, ready to edit. I've picked one in particular, which I think we're gonna start with, which is this one. We're gonna start in Lightroom, so it's Lightroom Classic that we're using. Then we're probably gonna end up in Photoshop just to finish it off with a couple of extra touches. Now, obviously the photo as it is, as you can see, it just looks like a photo of a Lego car. It's very obviously Lego-y. The colors are fairly vibrant. Um, I want to try and make it into a more cinematic image. I want to try and end up with something in the end which looks a little bit more stylized and cinematic. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to jump down on the right down to the transform panel. And we're actually going to make some, some adjustments here. So let's start off with horizontal. We're just going to move that a little bit. Vertical as well, stretch it out. And then let's bring the aspect down as well. And then of course scale it up just to uh, get our kind of final image. And then let's just use the Y offset to actually position that slightly. There we go, I think that's okay. I think that looks that looks uh, a little bit better. Let's maybe also rotate it just slightly. Just slightly, there we go. I think that looks okay. Uh, so obviously you can see we've got our main car out in front. We wanna, we'll start off by, by adjusting the exposure a little bit. I think it looks basically fine, but let's add a little bit of contrast, not too much. Bring those highlights down and bump those shadows up so we get some nice shadow detail. Whites we're going to leave pretty much as is. Blacks I'm just going to bring up for now as well because I'm probably going to go for a more faded black effect. So a bit like a film kind of look. Texture, let's bump that up a little bit. Let's bump the clarity as well. Vibrance maybe a touch. Saturation let's bring down. And let's come down here to the tone curve. Now, if you've seen our video on the tone curve, you'll know uh, all about it. You'll know how powerful it is. Well worth a watch if you're not familiar. But we go through the, all the kind of ins and outs of how it works. But we're gonna start off with the RGB channel. We're gonna we're gonna just just add some points here along the curve, and then I'm gonna bring the the actual black level right down the bottom left up to create that kind of faded blacks effect there, a little bit like uh, like we're shooting on film. Now let's go over to the red channel. I'm gonna start by bringing the shadows right down, bring it back up to the midtones, and then bump up the actual highlights. I'm gonna do the same for green. So you can see the image is going a bit crazy right now. But don't you worry, because we're actually gonna do the same for blue as well. And what we've done now is we've got a very controlled contrast across the image, across the different channels. So we can easily, if I turn that off and turn that back on, that is incredible. We've done a lot, actually. I might bring the overall contrast of the image back down a little bit. We might go back and adjust that. It may be that that's too heavy, but we'll see how we get on with the rest of the edit. That's a good thing about editing in this style. We you know we can make a change like that and then if we decide later on it's too heavy we can go back and change it actually by doing it in the different channels as well we can we can alter different colors like that as well so it's really quite handy so let's come down to the hsl tab now this is where we can affect the hue the saturation and the luminance of different colors so we're going to start off by bringing the oranges and the yellows down a little bit greens i want to bring towards the yellow blues let's just bring them towards the aqua a little bit then let's jump into saturation now saturation we're going to go a little bit crazy bring the oranges and yellows down a tiny bit greens quite a bit because i want to i want to darken this over here as well and blues i'm going to basically desaturate completely and the reason for that is i, I really want to want to take out that vibrant blue from the cars because i think that's what makes them look so kind of like a toy that's really what sells it as a toy which is really nice but in this we're going to go for a stylized cinematic image so we're going to really desaturate those blues we're also going to bring the purples and the magentas all the way down, even though I don't think there's any purple or magenta in there. And then let's come over to luminance, where I'm, again, I'm going to bring the blues down a bit, the aquas down, the greens down to darken that grass back there, and the yellows and the oranges. I'm actually going to probably, let's pump them up just a tiny bit because of, because of our driver's face. Now let's come down to the, the split toning. 
I'm gonna add a bit in here and then we can always take it out if we don't like it afterwards. So I'm putting a bit of orange into the highlights, a little bit of teal into the shadows. And then let's jump past this area. We've done a bit of transforming ourselves. A Little bit of a vignette here. Shadows I'm just gonna bring slightly towards the green side. And then let's play around with the calibration. Now this allows us to, uh, to do a bit of a color grade on our image. This allows us to, to really pull those colors into different directions and get a look that we're happy with. So let's start off with the red primary. Let's bring this up a little bit towards the oranges and just a little bit of a bump in saturation. Same with the greens. So let's bring this all the way up towards the kind of green end, but let's bring the saturation down a little bit. And then with the with the blue primary, let's bring it towards the teal, which is actually gonna affect the oranges as well. We can bring that saturation down a little bit there as well. We might even bring that a little bit further over. Now let's come right back up. Let's see where we're, where we're at now. I think this already looks significantly different to how we started. Let's do a before and after. So this was the before, and this is where we're at now. I think it looks it looks really different. Let's play around with a little bit with the white balance though. Let's warm this up a touch. And then let's bring the, the tint down towards the greens a little bit. And then next thing, let's let's add in some graduated filters and some radial filters to kind of highlight some parts of the image. Now, first things first, let's go for the radial filter uh, onto our driver. So I'm gonna double click effect. I'm gonna click radial filter, double click effect to reset it and then just bring the exposure up. Make sure you've got invert on, and we can just make a circle around his face there, make another circle around the Panasonic logo, so that's nice and bright as well. And then we can click done. Now that looks a little bit bright, so let's go in, let's press the radial filter again, find the little kind of uh, icon on the screen, we can click that, then we can just go in and just lower that exposure a little bit. Let's do it down to down to about plus 0.34. I think that was good. Let's now bring in a graduated filter. So we click graduate filter up there, double click effect to uh, reset it. And let's bring in, uh, let's reduce the exposure coming in from the top right, coming in from the top left, and maybe even coming in from the, from the bottom right as well. There we go, now we're really focusing on our driver there. Next thing I wanna do is bring in the adjustment brush. So I'm gonna click adjustment brush, double click on effect, as we've been doing. Uh, and I'm gonna do something with these lights. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the exposure up to about, probably about three stops, a so plus three stops, and bring the saturation up as well. Now you can hold space bar and left click to zoom in, and uh, you can adjust the size of the brush with the scroll wheel on your mouse. Let's get it so that even the feathered part just touches the edges of the lights. Let's just do one click there, one click there, and one click there. Now let's uh, zoom back out. What a huge difference that makes, just brings that bit to life. And all we've done there is added exposure and saturation to the three lights, and it's really brought that to life. Now I'm gonna go back in and do another adjustment brush. So let's click adjustment brush, double click effect to, uh, to reset that. And then of course, Let's use dehaze to add a little bit of atmospheric kind of smoke and stuff like that. So we actually come over to dehaze. We're gonna bring that down to about minus 60. Now, if you've seen our video about making mist and fog within Lightroom, it's super easy. It's basically just dehaze, just minus dehaze. And we can come in and we can paint this in. Let's bring the flow down to about 79 is fine. Just paint around here a little bit. We can paint along the side of the car. Is it is it perfect? No, probably not. But we're gonna we're gonna change some stuff in in Photoshop anyway. We can just paint a little bit here, but it helps with selling the kind of atmosphere of what's going on. I'm painting now in between the uh, yeah in between the the kind of struts here, uh, and just you want to do generally quite broad brush strokes with this kind of thing, um, and that looks. That looks pretty good, I think. Let's let's look at before and after. That was before. That's where we've got it to. So a pretty big difference, I'd say. And then let's uh, let's right click on the image. This is the great thing about having the uh, the Adobe subscription, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Is you can right click and just click Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020, 
where we're just gonna add the finishing touches to our image. We're just gonna, we're just gonna probably add a little bit of actual smoke. Let's bring in some smoke into the image. So our image is now opened in Photoshop. The very first thing I'm gonna do is just select the background layer, press Control J to duplicate. Now we've got the background layer safe, with secure, no one touch it. And that's, that's there in case we completely destroy the photo. <laughs> we've got layer one to work on. So uh, let's go ahead and bring in some smoke. Now you can get smoke PNGs on the internet easily. There's all kinds of different free ones. There's ones you can pay for. Anyway, you can just Google smoke PNG or smoke on black background is gonna work just as well. We're gonna drop one in now. I've actually brought in two overlays here. So I brought in a smoke and a fog texture as well, which might end up working better. Let's try the fog first. So I'm gonna bring that over. I'm gonna position it probably somewhere around here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. That's going to get rid of all that black. And then we're going to hit create a layer mask, uh, which is going to come in. Now, of course, we've got videos about layer masks as well. They're super handy for editing in Photoshop. It, essentially, we've created a layer mask, which is all white. You can see it here. Everything in white is going to be visible on the layer. Anything you paint in black on the mask is gonna be invisible. We want it all to be black so we can paint it in as we go. So let's press Control I to just change that to all black. Let's select the paintbrush up here. We can hold Alt, right click to make sure it's a nice soft brush. You can hold, right click and Alt and uh, drag up and down to change the hardness. You can also drag side to side to change the size of the brush. Uh, and let's, uh, let's make sure we've got white selected. Let's bring the flow down to around to around 35%. And uh, let's just start painting kind of around the cars here. We, I think the key here is gonna be that we don't wanna go too far with it. I think a little bit of smoke is gonna look quite good and too much is gonna look bad. And you can press X to change to black if you run into this issue I've just run into. Of course, we could, uh, we could just duplicate the layer, select the move tool, and then uh, move the second layer down a little bit. Let's go back onto the layer mask. Let's make it a little bit easier. Let's paint it all back into black on this, this second one. Press X to change to uh, the color to white. And then we can start painting this in a little bit. You know what? I think that looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's bring the opacity down though, because I think it's way too way too strong. Maybe to about uh, oh, thanks very much. Maybe to about uh, forty percent. Let's do it on the other one as well. Bring that down to about forty percent. We want there to be a hint of it there, as opposed to a crazy amount. In fact, let's bring it down to about thirty percent. We just we don't want it. I don't want it to look. Ridiculous. Uh, I may even have gone a little bit far with the dehaze, but you know, you, you get the idea with what we're doing here. I think that looks really good. That's basically the full workflow. We've done a full workflow from taking the image through to editing in Lightroom, bit of Photoshop. We've taken the image from ultimately looking like this to then finally looking like this. So I'm really, really happy with that. I'm really happy with how that's come out. Of course, I'll list a full list of all the stuff I've used, so all the equipment I've used down in the description, so you can go and check that out for yourself. Loads of ways of doing this. I'd love to see anything that you maybe take a photo of while we're all stuck at home. I'd love to see it, especially if it's Lego or anything like that. I think it's quite cool. I think it's quite creative and challenging to take good photos of basically toys. I think it's an interesting uh, project to try, especially while we're all stuck at home. So if you do take any photos of that, make sure to tag at Park Cameras if you post it on Instagram so we can go and have a look. I'd love to see that and perhaps we'll even feature you in a future video. Maybe that's something uh, we'll start doing. I'd love to start doing that. So we will have a think about how to implement that. Of course, any questions, pop them down in the comments below. We'll go back to ASAP. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like the video because what a nice thing to do. Subscribe because, well, there's loads of stuff all the time. We're going to have loads of stuff over the next weeks, months, who knows how long, all about photography at home, loads of different projects you can try. We're doing full workflow tutorials. We've got loads of stuff in the pipeline. So make sure to subscribe for more content. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.